And after three years of traveling the world, I noticed that this is exactly what China is doing. For example, take the small island nation of Sri Lanka. Money, money, money. This developing country needs money, and China has a lot of it. So Sri Lanka took billions of dollars in Chinese loans. It was easy money, just there to be taken. And with that, they built skyscrapers, highways, airports, and shipping ports. The country grew and prospered. <laughs> But few years later, this easy money came with interest rates, and Sri Lanka was so much in debt that it couldn't pay back China its money. And the only way out was to give China control of what they had built. In other words, Sri Lanka lost a piece of its home to China because of debt. This is the Chinese money trap, and it's a real thing I saw all over the world. New Guinea. I saw two billion dollars in loans given by the Chinese to build skyscrapers, infrastructures, and ports. But there is no way this remote developing country can pay it back or its interest rate. And the only way out is to give China control of the country. In the Maldives, Pakistan, Malaysia, Laos, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa. The same thing is happening, and many countries are struggling to pay back Chinese loans. If you look closely, all these infrastructure projects, like highways, ports, and bridges, connect to China through the sea or through the land to form something far bigger, far more powerful than just a bridge—a new Silk Road. The world is already made by China, and I think slowly it will be owned by China. Don't get me wrong; building bridges, ports, highways, and airports is a great thing for the people and the country, but they come at a very high cost. And when these countries can't pay back the loans, these countries will lose their homes. One thing my parents had taught me is that there's no such thing as a free lunch or a free ride. So if we're not careful with our money or other people's money, then we better start learning Chinese. Xia Zhou Xian.